how are you? This is Dr. Kent, and this is Abbas House. I want to talk about something that's really on my heart. And that's true Christianity. Do we understand what true Christianity is? See, the word Christian comes from being Christ-like. So, if we take a look at the perfect example of what Christianity is like, we have to look at our Messiah. And he never hated. He didn't detest, ridicule, mock, bash people over the head with the word of God ever. You know, even the Pharisees and the Sadducees that um, he dealt with, he was not cruel with them until they decided to cross him. Then he became somewhat justified anger, and that's okay. As a Christian, we're allowed to protect what we believe. We're allowed to do that. As a matter of fact, we're commanded to do that in the Bible, that if somebody crosses that line to be rude, obnoxious, or ignorant, we as brothers and sisters are to rectify that situation. However, that needs to be done. That's called justified anger, brothers and sisters. And it's allowed. We're allowed to do that. Because we're compelled to do that. Because our shepherd did that. So, what do I get and what am I talking about? Well, the reference that I'm going to use for this message is Matthew 22, verses 31 to 45. And he talks in there, he was talking at the end of his ministry about how we are to care for one another and love one another as he loved us. And if we go to verse 31, we see that the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the religious leaders of the day decided to question him on the law. <laughs> I mean, seriously? Really? You're going to question the man who helped create the law on the law? <laughs> this is a really bad mistake. I mean, so as we see... In verse 31, he was approached by them, and they asked him, Master, teacher. See, they knew who he was. They had no question who he was. What is the greatest commandment of all? And why did they do that? Because they wanted to see if they could trick him, fool him, and tantalize him in to blaspheming himself. This is what he said. The law is the law. And the commandments are set as an example of how to do and be Christian. So, if that's the case. What are we supposed to do? Well, if we look at Exodus chapter 20, it talks about the first five commandments and that we are to have no other gods before us, continue to make him the greatest person in our lives by putting him first above all else. 
And he says to them in this statement that we are to love the Lord our God with all our hearts, with all our souls, and with all our minds. Now, if we go to Exodus chapter 20, in the first five commandments, we see what he's talking about, that we are to keep the Sabbath day and keep it holy. We are to honor him and have no other gods before us. We are to show and prove our love to him beyond any shadow of a doubt. But he didn't stop there. Because not, there's ten commandments, not five. And he continues in verse 35, where he says that we are to love our neighbor as ourself. Thus, the last five commandments. And we're to take that seriously, because that's one of the last things that our Messiah said before he was put to death as a martyr. So make no mistake on this. If you truly love our Savior, Lord, Master, Creator, if you truly love Elohim, and for those that don't know, Elohim is referring to the Trinity which is, we say today, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. But the correct name is this. Abba is the Father. Yeshua, or Yahweh, or Yahweh, is our Messiah. And Rak HaKadosh is the Holy Spirit. It's the same thing. You know, so if we go about with hatred, belittlement, bigotry, racism, or mockery, laughter, ridicule, judgment, gossip, it's an ugly word. I mean, seriously. You know, if you're talking about somebody else, you probably need to look in the mirror because what you see in them is probably what's in you. You know, this has been my experience. You know, that when I see something wrong in somebody else, I'm probably doing it myself because our Lord and Savior has a unique way of putting people in front of us that mirror what we are. So, you cannot judge people based on age, race, race, sorry, age, race, creed, or color, or sexual orientation. How dare you, how dare you as a Christian Sit yourself on a Godhead position and criticize and judgment of other people. See, in Matthew also, there was a woman who was going to be stoned to death for, at that time, the worst crime in the Jewish custom, which was adultery. She was going to be stoned. So the Pharisees and Sadducees again, and the religious leaders of the day, decided that they would involve the Messiah, which was a big foolish mistake on their part. However, they brought her in front of him. And said to him, Messiah, see, again, they knew who he was. They had no question about who he was or what he was about. They did not 
not know who he was. Let me say that again. They had a complete understanding of who he was. But because of what he could do, they were afraid of that. So they brought her in front of him and said, Master, this woman has committed adultery. According to the law, she is to be stoned to death. If you remember the story in Matthew, he didn't say anything at first. He just looked at them and said this statement, let the one of you who have no sin show the first stone. So if we look at that, this person, this woman, we don't know her name, is accused of the greatest crime at the time of adultery. And she was to be stoned to death. And he simply said to them, let you who are sinless throw the first stone. Now, if you know anything about the Bible at all, you know the only one that could throw that stone was himself. And he chose not to. <laughs> what did he do instead? He started writing in the ground. Now, there are many speculations by theologists and the uh, theologians and pastors and ministers and priests and Orthodox Christians and Jewish really leaders leaders there's all kinds of questions about this but see my take on this and this is only my take I believe that each of them had certain sins and as he was writing in the sand he began to write their sins because as we continue with the story, we see that from the oldest to the youngest began to leave and walk away. Right down to it was him and her. And he looked at her after a time and said, Basically, in layman's terms, I absolve you of all of your sins. Go and sin no more. Because he looked at her and he said, Where are your accusers? And she said, Rabbi, they left. And he said, Go and sin no more. At that, that time, he absolved her of everything she did to that point. So, think about this for a second. Ponder this. Pause this message and think about this question. Then answer this. What is your greatest sin? that you think he cannot forgive you for. Write it down. Make it public. Because if you don't acknowledge your own sin, he cannot absolve you of that sin. You must name the sin. It doesn't matter how great that sin is. Because you have to understand something. The Messiah, the prophets, and the apostles in the Bible said this many times. No sin is greater than the other. No sin. So if I lie to my wife, my friend, my family, or you, I'm guilty of murder. 
That's what it says in the Bible. No sin. There is no such thing as a little white lie, stretching the truth, or anything like that. It's very simple. Let me say it this way. The truth shall set you free indeed. Yes, at the time, it may hurt you. It may hurt them. But as we know from human beings, eventually, that hurt goes away. And then we can move on. But until you acknowledge that sin, see, I used to hate gay people. I used to destroy them. I named that sin. He forgave me. I used to go around and collect money for the bikers and the mafia. I named that sin, and he forgave me. I did unspeakable things to people, hurt people, physically, emotionally, and psychologically. He forgave me. See, for many years, <coughs> I believed that I could not be a good Christian. Let me tell you a little secret. Lean in close. There is no such thing as a perfect Christian. Did you hear that? If you didn't, rewind this and play it over and over and over again till we, you get it in your mind there is no such thing as perfect. There is no perfect church. There is no perfect woman. There is no perfect person. There is no perfect pastor. There isn't. Humans are fallible. God is infallible. You see, when you look at the Bible and you look at Genesis to Revelations, the whole Bible tells a story. You can't have the New Testament without the Old Testament. You can't have the Old Testament without seeing the New Testament. Because in the Old Testament, it talks of things to come. A lot of it is prophecy, and it happens in the New Testament. Don't be foolish and naive and dumb. You can't have old and new. Because if you look at ourselves, for an example, when we were the old carnal person, that miserable, wretched, nasty sinner, did we mess up? Did we foolishly do stupid mistakes and dumb things? <laughs> Probably. No, I know I did. But he took that old carnal personality and changed it to a holy, justified persona. Hate, bitterness, bigotry, racism, judgmental, judgment, gossip, lust, fornication, adultery, All those still exist today. All you need to do is look at the world. 
I mean, open your eyes, please. Our Messiah taught us that no matter what, we are to love everyone. So in closing, I would like to say this. If you think your neighbor is the one you spend coffee with, the one you go to church with, the one you go to golf with, spend time with, play sports with, whatever the case, that person that you hang out with, if you think that is the neighbor, <laughs> get a clue. Seriously, get a clue. If we go back to Matthew 22 for just a minute, we are to love the Lord our God with all our hearts, with all our souls, and with all our mights. And equally, and second to it, is this part, that we are to love our neighbor as he loved us. That neighbor... means anybody not just the person we have coffee with the person we socialize with the person we talk with anybody we come in contact with becomes our neighbor everybody every single solitary person we meet in life from the time we breathe till the time we stop breathing is our neighbor. If you judge, ridicule, mock, make fun of, or gossip about any of those people, you are committing a sin. That sin is very simple. You are not living a Christ-like life. Being truly Christian, being truly Christ-like, is not judging, mocking, making fun of, ridiculing, belittling, or gossiping about anybody. Please. Please. If you profess to be a Christian, then you must act Christian. Abba, Father, thank you for being here with us, for giving this message. Bring it forth to fruition. Open the eyes, ears, spirit, and heart of those who hear it, that they may know that this is true word of yours, and they may see the light. And I ask these things in Yeshua's precious name. Amen. Till next time we meet. God bless. And I love you all.